The all-new American LG-118 Peacekeeper Missile, also known as the MX for Missile Experimental, was a force to be reckoned with. At 195,000 pounds, 71 feet long, and 7 feet wide, the MX was the largest U.S. missile of the time in size, lethality, and accuracy. Each equipped with a lethal payload of 10 independently guided nuclear warheads equivalent to 300,000 tons of TNT, the destructive power of the Peacekeeper is almost unfathomable. To see the comparison of other missiles of the time, the Minuteman III, the next largest U.S. missile, was about one-third of the weight of the MX missile. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, also known as the Mormon Church or the LDS Church's stance against the basing of the MX missile in Utah, Nevada, was an example of taking a stand because the Mormon Church firmly opposed the government and the common consensus of the United States, ignited a change in our country's defense systems, and reduced the amount of MX missiles that were produced, ultimately saving Utah and Nevada's natural resources and land. After the end of World War II on September 2, 1945, the United States and the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, or USSR, the two largest superpowers during the time, turned against each other in a war of ideas and words, and not military action, but a cold war. The US and USSR both had different forms of government and economies. The US had a capitalist economy and a republic government, and the USSR adopted a communistic government. The United States and USSR fought proxy wars in countries such as Korea and Vietnam to stop or sustain communism. The Cold War also led the US and the USSR to compete for the best military technology and advancement of the time. As the Cold War sped forward, both countries expanded their nuclear weapons arsenal. In 1979, the United States estimated in a government report the Soviets would have 5,928 warheads in their no-response, multiple-warhead ICBM force. In 1979, the President of the United States of America, President Jimmy Carter, realized that the nuclear weapons of the United States were beginning to become outdated and vulnerable. He decided to replenish and revitalize the United States' nuclear weapons by building the newly designed MX missile and to have it ready for action as soon as possible. Taking action, President Carter made a statement on the 7th of September, 1979, which stated that the MX would be based in the western deserts of Utah and Nevada. Carter and his administration planned to base the MX using a shell game type of strategic basing system. The MX will be based in a sheltered road mobile system to be constructed in our western deserts, the total exclusive area of which will not exceed 25 square miles. This system will consist of 200 missile transporters or launchers, each capable of rapid movement on a special roadway connecting approximately 23 horizontal shelters, explained Carter. In his statement to the country, Carter continued to explain that this missile was to be used as strategic deterrence. Carter's plan was officially named the Multiple Protective Shelter System, and work on the logistics began about a week after his announcement. President Carter and the United States government decided that the Great Basin would be the optimal location for the MX missile, but the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints did not agree. This crucial disagreement would eventually lead to the Mormon Church's stand against MX. During President Carter's administration, another pressing matter concerning the MX was the SALT II Treaty, or Strategic Arms Limitation Talks Treaty which set limits to the nuclear weapons the United States and the USSR possessed. The treaty specifically regulated how many independent warheads each missile could hold. The SALT II treaty made it more important for the United States to increase the nuclear arsenal. January 20th, 1981, the end of the Carter administration, ushered in Ronald Reagan as the new president of the United States. From the start, Ronald Reagan took MX by the horns. Our current aging land-based missiles are suffering from attrition. The 22-year-old Titan missiles are being retired, leaving our land-based missile force with less and less punch with which to deter aggression. And that's one of the reasons we need the Peacekeeper. It's the most reliable and accurate land-based missile America has ever produced. He assigned Caspar Weinberger the Secretary of Defense, to create a panel of non-government professionals who would evaluate the MX and its basing modes. These professionals would look at the many basing modes and determine the best option based on the facts. This commission was named the Towns Commission, 
Created in March of 1981 and named after Charles Towns, the leader of the group. As this group studied the many options, more opposition rose up against MX being based in the multiple protective shelter system. Finally, after long consideration and thought, the Mormon Church's leaders, or the First Presidency, released a statement opposing the MX basing in Utah and Nevada on May 5, 1981. The lengthy, bold statement at about 700 words officially stood up to the MX in the Great Basin on grounds of the moral problem nuclear weapons pose, the strain it would put on the natural resources of Utah and Nevada, and the military target that it would put on the Great Basin. Our fathers came to this western area to establish a base from which to carry the gospel of peace to the peoples of the earth. It is ironic and a denial of the very essence of that gospel that in this same general area there should be constructed a mammoth weapons system potentially capable of destroying much of civilization. The impact of the May Statement was massive. Mormon congressmen quickly changed their opinions, and approval ratings for the MX plummeted. I think it will sway public opinion more into the realm of opposition than was previously the case, said Scott M. Matheson, the governor of Utah at the time. The First Presidency statement ignited change on the national level as well. The statement made nationwide papers such as the New York Times. As a result of the May statement of the LDS Church and other findings from many government reports, President Reagan made a speech advocating against the multiple protective shelters strategy and proposed that the MX missiles be placed in Minuteman silos. We will not deploy 200 missiles in 4,600 holes nor will we deploy 100 missiles in 1,000 holes. Instead, we will complete the MX missile, which is much more powerful and accurate than our current Minuteman missiles, and we will deploy a limited number of the MX missiles in existing silos as soon as possible. This temporary fix for MX was altered by Reagan to closely spaced basing, a method where the missiles are densely packed next to each other underground. Eventually, that idea was rejected by Congress in March 1982, so the Air Force and a panel called the Scowcroft Commission researched further how to base MX. Finally, on August 10, 1983, both Reagan and Congress approved of the basing of 100 MX missiles at F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Wyoming, and by December of 1988, the system was fully operational. Other groups, including No MX and SANE, also took stands against the MX missile on environmental views and for other reasons. Some may argue that the Mormons were not the primary activists, but that it was the other groups who truly took a stand. Although those groups may have expressed dissent, their impacts were minimal compared to the change that the LDS Church's stand created. In the end, the LDS Church's stand against the MX made a change and left an impact on our country that will not soon be forgotten. Through their stand, the LDS Church influenced where MX was based and indirectly influenced how it was based. Had MX been based in the Great Basin, there could have been unforetold effects to the natural resources of Utah and Nevada, and potentially other effects such as nuclear war. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints stated,